I bought my first record in 1972, if my memory serves me well. And it was the seven inch single by Status Quo called Paper Plane. And before that, my parents had bought uh, a few records like Benny Hill or something like that. And we used to play them on something, a uh, record player that was like a, a cheap version of a dance set. And uh, what I always remember is that we'd, we'd, we'd pick up these LPs put them on the machine uh, on 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 the turntable and we put the arm on on the record and about 50% of the time the arm would go straight across the record across the first all the way across the first side because it just wasn't uh, set up right and it would create a scratch that would for, forever then um, create a series of jumps and make the uh, make the the record unplayable so we had this Benny Hill record, which on, on one side had uh, a series of songs and on the second side was a series of uh, comedy sketches. And we could never play the, uh, the side with the, with the songs on. Anyway, I digress. Um, so I started uh, buying albums and um, uh, everything was, uh, you know, money was tight and it was, uh, they were, I wouldn't exactly describe them as being precious, but I kind of look af looked after them. And then around about the mid 1970s, so three or four years into the the initial building of what became my music library, um, I started to think about trading in some records. Um, so I'd I'd go to a local record shop in Newcastle and uh, in the Handyside Arcade, if anybody knows the uh, knows the area, might remember it. And I'd take a half a dozen records and get enough money back uh, to buy a couple of alternative ones uh, and I can't remember whether those were new ones or other second-hand ones and I did get rid of a, 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 a modest number that um, that uh, you know on reflection I probably shouldn't have done because they might have been worth a little bit uh, by now but anyway uh, I dig digress once more um, anyway so I'm continuing to buy records as normal and uh, like most teenagers and so on and then CDs came along in the mid 1980s, and then I started to buy uh, lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of CDs. Uh, but I didn't get rid of my vinyl records. And then uh, come the 1990s, when records were uh, LP records, vinyl records were all all but phased out, really. Um, what seemed to happen is that there was a um, kind of a hipster's rebellion or something um, of, of the sort and people started to buy records again. Now, of course, when CDs came along, loads and loads of people got rid of their records. Um, um, giveaways or charity shops or uh, selling them to, to the, the few record shops that were still trading in secondhand vinyl. And uh, uh, what happened... Uh, with me is that I started to take an interest again after I bought a Riga 3 turntable. Uh, one day I'll do a video on the different turntables that I've that I've had over the years. But I had a Riga 3 and I got it uh, I got it kind of upgraded uh, with a bit dampening here and there and a little bit of a new platter uh, and so on. And I thought, God, these records sound significantly better than they did before so uh, my enthusiasm for records started to come back and i started to buy secondhand records again and of course in the late 90s and in the 2000s you know the, the, the what was it the uh the noughties <laughs> the noughties is that records in secondhand shops were relatively cheap and even the new records that were starting to come out were still relatively relatively cheap uh, and so I started to buy loads and loads of secondhand records again. I, I started taking interest in going to these record shops and 150 quid later with, a, you know, 100 LPs under my arms or in several bags, I would come home and, I, and I'd, I'd always inspect them. Um, but I found that uh, uh, even if I did, even if the record did look reasonably good, that there was something not quite right about it. And uh, when it went on the turntable, it was obvious that it was uh, dirty. So... I took an interest in buying uh, various brushes and fluids to try and get the, the records clean again before I uh, eventually decided to buy um, 
a vacuum record cleaning machine probably about 15 years ago now and I'm going to talk about that my experience with vacuum record cleaning machines of which I have had three and retained two and an ultrasound cleaner that I acquired um, a couple of days ago and I just kind of want to compare them and talk about how I go about cleaning records okay I'm going to try and do this as best I can uh, and talk you through the uh, these uh, two bits of kit I've got here one is the um, a, a vacuum record cleaning machine uh, which is um, by a company uh, with a brand name called Moth and this is the ultrasonic cleaning machine here that is the uh, humming guru and that's what I've uh, just acquired so let me talk about um, what it's meant what these both have meant to me uh, or are becoming to mean to me and what the um, uh, what my experience is of using them so the vacuum record cleaning machine I've had the mo I've got the moth I also have the um, the project which I bought in 2021 2022 and I also used to have a clear audio version now what's interesting about vacuum record cleaning machines is that this one's got a nice lid comes off uh, that's a brush that I use basically what they do is that you put the record on the platter here I should pick a uh, maybe I'll pick a record just excuse me a second let's just pick some crappy old record that's a bit knackered here's one that I was recently given um, I won't describe what it is but there you've got a record here on the stateside label um, and basically what you do in the in the, vine, in the uh, vacuum record cleaner machine is you take off in this case a puck and you slip it on like that tie it in there fasten it in switch it on start rotating and then you put the fluid on top and you put the fluid on the moth version you put the fluid on top and then what you do is you with the record still wet you turn it over and then rotate it again the puck's not tightened so that's why it's not rotating there we go so it's rotating again so what happens is when you you can rotate it in both directions it's a pretty good one um, and then what happens is that you switch on the vacuum and through this groove here you can see a, you might be able to see a groove the vacuum the vacuum itself sucks all the um, the fluid off the record along with any debris that's within the grooves this particular one is the one I I've retained as as one of my favorites because of a number of reasons really one the vacuum here is more powerful than either the clear audio or the more modern project vacuum record cleaning machine um, it means it gets more fluid off fluid more fluid off more efficiently it also rotates more slowly so often you find that with the project or the clear audio it's running at about maybe 50 percent faster um, maybe twice the speed perhaps and they say after about uh, about two or three revolutions the moisture is off but to be honest i prefer to make sure it's bone dry before I put it on my record turntable. This one is a lot more efficient at uh, getting the um, getting the, the debris out. Um, it's too noisy when it's operating. If you listen to this. There is no way that you can sit in your listening room listening to records while cleaning and be able to hear the records. So this is used essentially um, for cleaning when you're doing nothing else um, what I tend to find is that when I um, clean records um, I tend to select them from the shelves and then I um, because I'm intending to listen to them and I thought well I'll just check if it's a little bit grubby or a bit dusty I'll run it through this machine and uh, and it'll be a lot cleaner in my experience this this vacuum record cleaning machine here 
has absolutely revolutionized my listening of vinyl. I've uh, often said that this is probably pound for pound the best value hi-fi purchase I've ever made because it's in the chain. It's basically cleaning the software so that when the stylus and the cartridge hits the surface, it plays as well as it possibly can. I think this gets the noise out of non-scratched vinyl, so just dirty or dusty vinyl. So if there's a real scratch in there, you'll continue to hear that as you play it. But as long as you, but I think this gets you about, uh, gets rid of about 80% of the surface noise. It's really been fantastic. And you can, it, you know, you can have a record clean within a minute and a half. Um, so this is great. I'd heartily recommend it, recommend, recommend it. But I want to talk, talk about this humming guru here, which I'll, which I'll come to in a second. But the reason why I want to do this video is I, I think there's a question as to if you want to clean your records, is it better to go the vacuum route or the ultrasound route? Or is it a combination of the two that works most effectively? So that's the vacuum record cleaner machine. Gets you about 80% to where you need to be, in my judgment. So let me come back to the humming guru, the ultrasound one. Right, okay, the humming guru. This is the ultrasound machine. Now, um, as I say, this arrived a couple of days ago, and I was curious because a vacuum record cleaner machine will normally cost you about three or four hundred pounds. They used to do a kid version of the moth one here, that uh, if you were a uh, you know, half decent carpenter, you can kind of make a case yourself, but and you would uh, you would uh, um, um, construct uh, using components that come from the uh, from the supplier, and do a slightly cheaper version. Um, but I didn't, so that's about three, two, three, four hundred pounds. You have to check. Um, you can even get the um, the uh, the project one on uh, via Amazon, as far as I would just think maybe where I bought it. This one here, I held off getting because um, I'd heard about this one, um, and I'd, I held off getting it because, as far as I'm aware, you have to order it from Hong Kong. So the Humming Guru website. So if something goes wrong with it, you can't really take it back to a UK retailer and get a repair or a replacement from them. You've got this dilemma as to how do you get this back to Hong Kong or how do you organize some sort of a, a refund or a replacement item. Um, the delivery time on this one, um, so let me just come back to the cost a second. Um, when I when I ordered it, it cost about three hundred and three hundred and fifty pounds, and it's costing me about another forty pounds to get it through customs um, with a duty charge uh, on it. Um, the lead time has been about three weeks, so that's not too bad actually. Um, I would say from from a, a supplier's point of view, I placed an order and immediately got a um, a reply a co order confirmation but that the communications went dead for about two and a half weeks. And then suddenly as your item has been shipped, which is kind of nice, but it would have been, a, I read on their website, somebody had left a comment that it was uh, ordered and supplied within a few days. Well, not the case here. Anyway, so what does this do? Basically you take the lid off here. Let's just put that down there. You got, you've got, you, you've got um, a groove here that the record sits in. So let me just, just demonstrate. There we go. You put the record in and then that will rotate. That rotates, it's got some rollers on either side. That rotates through a bath of water that um, you measure and place the water in the water tank uh, enough to, um, well, sufficient to do a 12 inch record. Um, Adapters are available for 10 inch and 7 inches. I, I didn't get them. And what you do is you pour the water after each cycle back into this bath here and then reinsert the water tank uh, in its place in the body. Is that, and after it's done its ultrasound cycle, uh, the water then drains from the tank back into this receptacle here for this, uh, this, this water tank here at the bottom. So it rotates and you've got various modes where you've got you can dry it uh, sorry you can do it you can do a deep clean 
uh, and a longer dry cycle and so on and so forth. Um, in terms of operation, this so far has been pretty reliable, although one time uh, the ultrasound, uh, the, the, the vibration of the water particles didn't occur and I had to switch it off uh, for a, and then try again after I drained the tank. I don't know what was going on there, but it wasn't. A, it's not one hundred percent reliable so far. But it did eventually work again. A couple of problems with this one, in addition to the potential for unreliability. Um, it has a drying cycle here that is inadequate. It's got a couple of fans, one on either side here, and it will dry your record in five or ten minutes. My experience is that if the humidity is above 60%, uh, and I've got a hu humidity indicator within this room because it's some storing records here. Um, my experience is that if it's above that, um, the 10 minute cycle doesn't necessarily dry the, uh, the record. So what I've learned to do very, very quickly is that after I've put the record through a drying cycle here, and I might only do like a five minute drying cycle rather than the 10, I'll put it on the vacuum record cleaning machine and then do a single cycle and that gets rid of the moisture from the record. So I'm using them in combination and that might be the solution here. Um, the other thing to, to, uh, to remember is that when you, do, uh, when you use a record vacuum cleaning machine, a, record vacu a vacuum record cleaning machine, what you end up doing, you put fluid on the record, as I said earlier, and what you then do is you, that the fluid is sucked off and goes into a tank in here, but because there's a little bit of alcohol in the mix, um, it tends to evaporate. So there's a tap here uh, for any outflow, but you never have to use it. Um, so every time you put fluid on here, it's clean fluid. In here, you have water that is kind of used several times but you don't want to use it too often so i think maybe three four or five records and you even if they're not grubby there's a there's a sense that um you don't want to leave any small dust particles which will be in the water on the surface as it goes through its drying cycle so i find already is that i have to change this water um, quite frequently but that's not a problem because i buy this i've got this deionized water solution here this was what I dilute the record cleaning fluid when I use it on the vacuum machine but I'm using this only in here and so you can use deionized water or distilled water um, so that's cheap as chips so that's 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 not a problem at all so it doesn't dry properly um, but I've got the vacuum as a, as a backup what else can I say about it my experience is um that if this record cleaning machine the vacuum gets about 80 percent of the noise of an unscratched record off the surface it's uh putting it through this gets you to about 95 percent i've absolutely definitely noticed a difference and i did a video a while ago reviewing and then complaining about this release which is Pink Floyd's Animals, uh, the 2018 uh, remix. And I was complaining is that the pressing had been, was so bad, is that particularly at the beginning of side two, uh, Pigs, three different ones, uh, it's quite a quiet introduction. There was a lot of surface noise, static noise. Putting this through this machine only yesterday, stunning. It got rid of almost every bit of surface noise. And what does, that, what does that mean in terms of listening? Uh, in my experience, one of the things that you want to do when you listen to vinyl records is that you want as much as you possibly can just to concentrate on the music. Now, a bit of surface noise, if you're listening to music in the background or when you're doing something else, that's absolutely fine. It, it doesn't tend to bother you. I mean, I've got some really scratched old records that I still enjoy uh, and I put them on when I'm doing other stuff. But if I'm trying to replicate an experience where 
I'm almost like in the concert hall. Um, I really want to hear the music. So I sit in my in my hot seat um, and I give 100% concentration to the music. Not all the time, but now and again. And I'm trying to trick my brain into, uh, as I've said before, trying to trick my brain into thinking I'm actually there with the musicians as they're playing. Now, if you like classical music, or you ever, if you've ever been to an orchestral concert, uh, which I have in me on many occasions, occasionally what happens, and sometimes you hear it on recordings as well, is that uh, during a break in the music, or while one part of the orchestra is playing, the other part may be resting, and occasionally you hear a violin bow being dropped on the floor. You hear a little bit of noise. And that's not ordinarily not such a big issue, but... Um, what it does do, it momentarily distracts you from the music. So your, your mind wanders to what happened there and you're not hearing the music that's being played by the rest of the orchestra. When you've got surface noise on a record, I've kind of concluded that when you've got surface noise on a record is that it's, it's taking you away from hearing the music as it was intended to be heard. And uh, I find that in playing Animals and a number of other albums that I've taken through kind of both machines, even really clean records, I'm hearing stuff I've not heard before. Now, I can't, un I can't say hand on heart, that's because an ultrasound cleaning process um, really gets the, uh, a much improved sound out of your records per se. What I am saying is that the distraction of the click and the static noise, when that goes, all you hear is the music and the gaps between the tracks, the noise floor drops significantly. So if you're one of these people like me who uh, listens to music in a variety of settings, including one where you do concentrate um, and, you, and, you, and you give your full attention to, to the music, which as I said, I do uh, fairly frequently, then I would recommend this machine, certainly. Um, whether you need the vacuum one, I don't know, it's up to you. I find them working in combination is a great solution for me. Now, I have some reservations about the long-term um, reliability of this Humming Guru machine. The build quality kind of looks nice, but it feels a bit flimsy. Um, and my concerns have expressed already about uh, what happens if something goes wrong, what the hell do I do? Um, and the drying cycle, of course, which is a bit of a, it's a, bit of a problem, um, unless you're doing a purely cleaning session. But I, as I said before, I kind of clean it with an intention to play it straight away. So this is not ideal on its own. But it's a nice piece of kit, and uh, I would recommend it. And as for vacuum record cleaning machines are concerned, out of the three I've tried, the Moth is easily the best. Um, easily the best. So um, you'd have to check that up on the internet to see whether it's still available. Um, but it uh, it's amazing now. I can go to record shops, second-hand record shops now, go through the cheap one pound or two pound or one you know one dollar bins, and look at records that have been really badly neglected and I can do a visual inspection and know pretty well is this scratched or is it just dirty and if it's dirty I can bring that record up to pristine condition when I bring it home so I've picked up loads of bargains since I bought the vacuum record cleaning machine and I'm uh, eager to get back out into looking at secondhand uh, records uh, once more to see if uh, if I can pick up some some gems that I can put through this machine, and uh, make a real difference to my listening experience. Anyway, so that's how I clean records. A um, bit obsessive maybe, uh, but I know people spend a lot more money on kit than, than these two uh, these two items here to get their records clean. But I has it been worth it for me? Absolutely. Vacuum is fantastic. This is the icing on the cake really makes has made a difference so i'm very happy with it so far so anyway hope that's helpful for you see you in the next video